Act, talking to some Democrats this morning doing their postmortems. I mean, they still, they, they believed in their ground game. They believed they knocked on the doors they needed to. They hit all their metrics. We've been talking the last couple of days. They're not giving Elon Musk and his group all that much credit, but let's be clear, Elon Musk now will have an outsized role in the Trump administration going forward. There's also a real sense when we see the final numbers that the, you know, there was a lot of Democratic angst about her vice presidential pick. Should it have been Josh Shapiro? Most Democrats I've talked to this morning say it wouldn't have mattered. Mm -hmm. These numbers suggest that the Wall Shapiro choice really wouldn't have mattered. Uh, and they, there is a sense that she did run a, a good campaign with some real high watermarks. But that's the problem is her campaign excelled in the big set pieces. She had you know, her meteoric rise. The, the Democratic convention in Chicago in August was a home run. She obviously cleaned Donald Trump's clock uh, in their debate. But then there were no other set pieces. And the, the, and the Trump campaign smartly refused to give her another debate. And that just deprived her of these big moments to introduce herself to the people uh, of the country who, whose vote she was asking for, because they were still getting to know her. And, and I will say the last thing, uh, Joe, that the, the one thing that, though, that even the, the most senior folks in the Harris campaign do view as a misstep was when she appeared on The View and was asked point blank, how would you differentiate your policies from Joe Biden? And she didn't really have an answer. She eventually got one a few weeks later. But that was a moment where she had a moment to differentiate herself from a president who's still underwater, very much so underwater in, in public polling. And she wasn't able to. She's walking a fine line between respecting Joe Biden and, and separating herself. Just a few numbers for people yeah. who are just waking up this morning on the West Coast. Uh, according to our exit poll, Donald Trump won among Latino voters. 45%. Uh, he didn't win overall, but he earned the vote of 45% of Latinos. A huge, huge number. Latino men in particular were decisive. Just a note about that Iowa poll that we talked so much about the last few days that had Kamala Harris up by three points. Donald Trump right now winning Iowa by 13 <laughs> points. It's just unbelievable. Yeah. Um, so there's unbelievable. Another, another Donnie, I, I looked, was looking deep into our exit poll. This We talked about young voters, first-time voters. In 2020, Joe Biden won first-time voters 64 to 32. Young people, first chance to vote or people who hadn't voted before. Donald Trump last night won first-time voters by nine points. It's a swing of almost 40 <clears throat> points. There's so much in these numbers to sift through. But at the end of the day, Donald Trump grew his margins in almost every county where he won. He won in places people were shocked to see him win, counties around in New Jersey and New York and, and Illinois. Uh, just an overwhelming victory. I think it was interesting. I saw a lot of it with my friends' kids, the college kids who graduated college, 20, early 20s, first time voters. And I think I go back to what I said earlier to them. He was going to solve their problem. And I think particularly for young male voters, the strength, his strength, he's going to fix it. He's going to solve it. I don't care about anything else. And I also think a lot of young people are also fed up with very super progressive attitudes. I think, I, I think the Democrats, Joe, going back to your initial question, and you may disagree with this, I think they need, need to move to the center. I think they're the What does that so mean, though? When you say they need to move to the center, where, what do they need? Do you, are you saying that they should not support trans people like let's just be very let's just be specific because that's what the ads are doing so if the if the analysis in the immediate aftermath is they have to move to the center i mean what is the center I, because i i disagree that that is it but i want to hear what is the center because you're not the only person to be clear i've heard say that yeah. i've heard you know the democrats have been in my phone this morning the center are uh, the people i described before for, for, i'm not even talking about an issue we can talk about issues or the people i described before who bounce back and forth who play between the 45 yard lines that tends to win elections if you look historically where it is so that's my feeling and we can agree to disagree all right so we also have with us u.s special correspondent for bbc news caddy k and staff writer at the atlantic tom nichols uh tom you argue in your latest piece for the atlantic that democracy is not over i'm going to get to that in just a moment i first want to read liz cheney's statement on the results of this election and she says she tweeted this out um, our nation's democratic system functioned last night and we have a new president-elect. All Americans are bound, whether we like the outcome or not, to accept the results of our elections. We now have a special responsibility as citizens of the greatest nation on earth to do everything we can to support and defend our Constitution, preserve the rule of law, and ensure that our institutions hold over these coming four years. Citizens across this country, our courts, members of the press, and those serving in our federal, state, and local governments must now be the guardrails of democracy. Tom, uh, your thoughts on the possibility that that can happen? <laughs> Well, <clears throat> strangely enough, um, I'm 
Well, I, I think I'm glad that Trump won an outright majority because I don't think the country could have taken one more election uh, where the Electoral College produced this kind of freak outcome of uh, the loser of the mm -hmm. popular vote becoming the president. Um, this is clarity now. Uh, you know, Donnie made the point about not walking up to people and, you know, uh, getting in their face. But I think it's on this we can say this is a clear choice. This is what you, the American 51 percent of the American people wanted. Um, this isn't an accident. It's not the Russians. It's not some fluke. Um, this this is a choice, and the American people have made a choice. He is the legitimately elected president uh, of the United States, and I think Cheney, what Cheney said was absolutely right. And I, what she said at the end of her statement, I, I echoed um, in what I put out this morning, saying, "Now, if you really care about democracy, you care about what happens in courts, in state houses, in the federal civil service, in the military. Um, you know, there are these institutions." are all still there and they all require uh, protecting. But I, I think um, one of the things that I'm really concerned about is that, and I've been, con and I actually had been having a bad feeling about this election for a while. I, I, it was cemented when I was in Pennsylvania about a week ago and I had a long conversation with a Trump voter um, where I came to realize that there was almost nothing, uh, this post-mortem that, that we've all been going through about what um, Biden could have done or Harris could have done or Walls or Shapiro. Um, I'm not sure anything could have been done because I think there's been something changed out there in America that's really f concerning. Um, right. But I think uh, the the notion that these institutions will now all all fall on January in January is wrong. But I think people have ignored that they have elected a man who has made it clear that he is basically lawless, that he doesn't he has no uh, loyalty to the Constitution, and I think. You know, in, after the uh, shock of this election wears off, this might start occurring to people again. And, and the only way to protect it is going to be in all those intermediate um, and state and local and, and federal institutions that all need protection now. You know, um, Caddy, um, Tom brings up a great point about uh, the fact that there is a clear choice now. Uh, that, that Donald Trump did win with the majority uh, of the vote. And now it's going to be up to him and the Republicans to run uh, government over the next two years. And if they don't run it well, that's why we have midterm elections. And uh, we've been talking this morning. There's a constant back and forth and back and forth in American politics. And um, chances are very good that uh, we will see the same thing again two years from now. Yeah, and American voters have proved themselves always very capable of putting a check on somebody they feel they've gone too far. I mean, one of the interesting things in the data that came out is that even people who felt he was too extreme still voted to him, which suggests they don't believe some of the more extreme things he said he's going to do. So whether he actually does remake the nature of the courts, renates the nat politicizes the American government in the way he's suggested he's going to do. He has the tools to do it, it looks like. And if he gets the House, he'll he'll have power unfettered for two years. And he's made it pretty clear that this is what he wants to do, make a government in his image that will do the policies, enact the policies that he wants them to. So let, let's see if he gets there. I mean, he, he wants to. Will the American people check him? Um, will the courts check him? Um, this is going to be a very turbulent couple of years for America, a very turbulent couple of years for the rest of the world watching America. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, Willie, I, uh, Tom also, I think Tom brings up a great point about talking to that Trump voter in Pennsylvania. Of course, we spent time leading up to the election looking at the things that Donald Trump was saying that seemed to break constitutional norms, political norms, our basic standards and values. This morning we're talking about the Democrats could have done, should have done, would have done. But Tom's right. Sometimes when you talk to Trump voters, and I, I know a lot of them, they're Trump voters. And you can talk to them for 30 minutes and you can show them chapter and verse of what he said, and it really doesn't matter. And that's family members, that's friends that I've known from, you know, time I was six years old. It just doesn't matter. So again, I think it's really important that Democrats look and see what happened, not specifically because of Donald Trump, but because they're losing races 
in the Senate, they're losing races in the House. This isn't like a one-off, right? This is this is a Democratic Party that is only uh, 32 percent of of Americans identify with. Yeah, there's there's going to be a lot of soul searching about how to move forward in the Democratic Party. I would add one other issue here: obviously, abortion rights, reproductive rights were so central to 2022, expected to be, and they were last night. But a lot of the people in the states that voted to enshrine abortion rights into constitutions in almost everywhere, save Florida. And by the way, even in Florida, it got 57% of the vote, but just didn't reach a 60% threshold that it needed to get. A majority of people in Florida wanted to enshrine it. But a lot of those people who voted to support abortion rights in their state also voted for Donald Trump, which is a hard thing to wrap your head around. When you consider that Donald Trump, of course, put the three Supreme Court justices on the court, overturned Roe versus Wade. But they want abortion rights, but they also want Donald Trump. Interesting uh, piece of the story last night there.